Across the globe, we've seen moments of panic, long queues at supermarkets, empty shelves, heightened anxiety as shoppers made a mad dash for essentials amid the escalating health crisis and restrictive lockdowns. For perspectives from the inside, I spoke to the group CEO of Singapore's supermarket giant Fairprice, Sia Kien Peng. February 7th this year, the day Singapore turned DOSCON orange. Do you remember the panic buying that followed? Were you taken by surprise? Yes, I remember that day. It was a Friday, very clearly. You know, uh, the minute, in fact, before DOSCON orange was officially uh, announced by government, we could already see, you know, the built up of crowd at our stores. But the minute it was announced, it was, I mean, uh, for lack of a better word, it was like all hell broke loose. They were buying in quantities which uh, for some, and we've seen some pictures, it was like there's no tomorrow. So it, it, it created obviously a lot of uh, strain uh, and, and it also heightened a lot of, uh, raised the anxieties of everyone, both staff and customers alike. We had to scramble. I remember, you know, uh, as I was uh, somewhere in the evening, you know, I, I had to immediately put out a statement and I was crafting my own statement because there was no time to talk to my Copcoms people and I just posted something on my Facebook. And I think after that, it actually went, went, went it, it spread quite widely. Uh, and subsequently, you know, my leadership team, we all went to the stores that night, that evening, to check it out. And I, and I convened a, a, a meeting at midnight uh, with my leadership team to talk about what we needed to do uh, immediately. It was the same scene all over the world. As you reflect, I think it's not unexpected. It's natural for anyone to feel that, you know, because we are in essential services, right? You, you want to make sure that there is food on the table. There won't be a case where, you know, I can't go out or I can't get the things I need for my family. You can understand, or rather, why people were buying, uh, first wanting to go to the stores today and not tomorrow. And then having gone to the stores, wanting to buy more than what they need. And it's a bit of um, peer pressure, or you could say hurt mentality. When I see someone else buying, I think I better buy a bit more. <laughs> it all adds up, and, and therefore you, we ended up with that situation. Across the board, not just at our stores, I think across all supermarket chains. Still, there are concerns about food shortage and grocery items shortage when they go into your supermarket and they see your shelves are empty. Can you clarify for us? Can you give us an idea of the stockpiles you have in your warehouse? In terms of supply, how many months are we talking about? Well, for different categories, you would have different uh, requirements. We had always had a stockpile of rice, for example. Uh, and, and under certain situations, we may increase our stockpile from X months to X plus Y months. Uh, of course, during this period, you know, and, and we have had to, I would say, review and rethink uh, many of our strategies. In fact, our minister, Minister for Trade and Industry, Mr. Chan Chun Singh, had already mentioned that actually as a country, uh, we are managing stockpile uh, covering a few key categories, carbohydrates, proteins, uh, fiber, and, and health supplements, and, and, and things like that, pre-COVID we were already importing from something like 70 countries. Because of COVID, I think we have strengthened our network of sources. So now we buy from even more uh, countries, more, more different uh, uh, new suppliers. So I think as a result, I think we are a lot more resilient. But this is always work in progress. This is always work in progress.